Les Sassy, thank you for joining me today. Not a problem. Lovely. Thanks, Thanks for having us. So just uh, before we get into this, uh, obviously I'm the only one on camera here and you two have some interesting um, characters up as your DP. So just to begin with, um, and I'm assuming that this has a lot to do with the doxing phenomenon that happens and occurs within the NFT space. Um, so just to begin with, boys, can you explain what the doxing thing is and why it's such a big thing in the space? Uh, and is it something that you guys intend to keep for the duration of your project? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So uh, main reason we don't really show who we are is just because of how the NFT space operates in general. Um, so a lot of you see like within the NFT space itself, a lot of it is quite rapid, quite pump and dump. Um, many people have really high expectations, many very short timelines. Um, so with our thing, we are trying to push something a bit more long term. So uh, doxing ourselves isn't something that we have off the cards. Um, we just want people to realize that this isn't a pump and dump project. The expectations should not be, oh, I bought in in two weeks, we didn't triple our money. Um, so creating that kind of expectation for a community of holders who actually are willing to wait and willing to actually create a product um, with us. And then at that point, most people realize that um, we'd feel much more comfortable about like, you know, like actually showing who we are and then uh, doing all that. But I mean, we do run quite a couple of projects and we are quite public of which projects we run. Um, and, you know, we're quite responsive to everyone. So it's not like we're trying to hide behind anything. And um, as you would know, you know, we're not too scared of uh, showing our faces. It's just, uh, it's yeah. just the, the wide community um, having that kind of like a uh, real drive to have what they want when they want it. And if they don't to blame someone, um, you yeah. know, Kind of give yeah, it's a real, it's a real privilege. I've got to say that I've seen both their faces. It's a privilege and an honor. <laughs> um, <laughs> so boys, look, um, obviously I gave a brief intro in the beginning, um, but look, just to start with, let's talk about, uh, the project you guys are a part of the NFT project you guys are a part of. So it's done down under soul. I came across this project just searching on magic Eden. It's a Solana NFT project. Um, and it's part of Solana, which is, which is a chain that's obviously growing immensely in popularity recently. Um, and uh, how about you give us the rundown on, I guess, how you came across NFTs and how you came to the, be part of the project that you've now built and what it's about. Let's start there. Um, Liz, you want to tell them how we uh, came across some NFTs in the first place? Yeah, it sounds good. Um, I guess, so like me personally, my initial this is the very very first exposure with nfts was actually on a radio segment and it was sort of discussing uh the intersection between real art and nfts and the potential that it gives back to the creators of the content and for me um as a sort of as a musician i thought oh wow that's actually quite a cool way of of you know removing that intermediary so that sort of sparked my initial interest in okay this is what nfts can do but in terms of us and our project, uh, it was sort of inspired from a few of our mates that we went to uni with. They actually founded a super successful uh, NFT project on Solana, and that was the boys who did Contrastive. And from that, you know, we sort of said, hey, we've got pretty similar skill set. Um, let's see what we can do. And obviously, there are financial incentives in the whole NFT space, which I'm sure everyone has sort of floating at the back of their mind. But I think for us, you know, the, there's sort of a true belief in what this technology can provide, whether it's, you know, the future of music, as I was saying, paving the way for the future of art, even in the event space. I think the potential and possibilities of what non-fungible tokens can do are just really endless. And so, you know, getting into the space now, getting in early is something that, you know, it's a bit of a non-negotiable in my opinion. So when you say, like, okay, so let's let's talk about why this is important for art and music because we're speaking to an audience who perhaps have only heard the term in passing um the term nfts as you mentioned it stands for non-fungible tokens now let's talk about what an nft is and and how it actually provides this value proposition to music art anything that needs a sort of um authentic authentication aspect to it um why is it that nfts have really capitalized on those sectors in your opinion so what's the underlying technology that we're discussing here 
Yeah, so I mean, the great, the beautiful thing about NFTs and like through the name of like the non fungible token is you can't replicate them. So through the blockchain, they are like one of one stamps that literally cannot be forged. So the beauty of that, I mean, you can think about it in, um, you know, like the the explanation I usually give to my parents whenever I explain to them what I do is uh, I, I use the analogy of like the rare baseball cards. So when you buy a baseball card, you know, it has inherent value. Um, because what it represents and what you can do with it and potential community that it involves you in. If you're, if you own this card, you know, you get recognized and potential communities gives you access to special things. But the problem is with a physical card is it could be replicated. You could have frauds and that does happen quite often in the real world. Um, so what NFTs do is they provide you with a way to own some kind of utility, own some kind of um, asset that cannot be replicated. And you can imagine uh, where that could be used in, um, you know, the real world quite often. Say, for instance, um, you know, I'm going to a concert. Instead of releasing those tickets or something as physical copies, uh, let's instead release them as NFTs. And then those NFTs, because they're not, uh, you can't forge them. Only one person can hold them at once, only one person can redeem them. So um, the utility for NFTs is definitely something uh, that is going to be growing a lot. Um, so the primary use case for NFTs these days, uh, in our current times, obviously like these PFP projects, um, owning PFPs, uh, like profile pictures, and then people attaching utility to that as well. So, so wait, wait, just wait on that, on that Sassy, just so for the audience. So the PFP projects, um, just because I'm aware of it, you guys are aware of it. Yeah. Well, they, if you're not on Twitter, you may not be aware of it. Yeah. So if you actually go on the NFT Twitter, um, in the in, into the NFT Twitter world, you'll start to realize that a lot of people have display pictures that aren't themselves, but are, are usually a, a, a piece of generative art or, or uh, cartoonish like characters, similar to what we can see here, um, representing. Um, representing them in the same way an alias would represent you instead of your name, for instance. Um, and those actual images are NFTs that they've purchased and the NFT being used as a display picture is almost like a badge of honor and a proof of a proof of you are part of that NFT space. Um, you understand that space and it's caught on dramatically. I, my entire Twitter is filled with people with PFPs and I'm sure it's the same for you boys as well. Yeah, I mean, like it kind of extends at this point, even the uh, like the uh, NFT Twitter space, because like you're seeing people like I'm pretty sure Steph Curry right now, like, you know, one of the biggest NBA stars, he's got a PFP of like his Bored Ape. Um, so that's like one of the biggest PFP projects like in the world right now is that whole Bored Ape Yacht Club. Each one is going for around a million dollars at this point. Um, and like having one of those, uh, I think it's like 5555 five, 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 like apes gives you like privileged access to like uh, particular events. I know the board eight yacht club, like they create exclusive events on that you can only get access to if you're a holder. Yeah. So providing that kind of like exclusivity um, through the NFTs and obviously not everything's gonna be as big as board eight, but different NFT communities been diff providing different utility um, within the metaverse and outside of the metaverse um, mm -hmm. that you can offer. So. A lot of projects have been, oh, here's a, uh, here's a house that um, you can buy within like our project and you as the NFT owner are the only person who's able to edit this house, um, similar to what our project is doing. Um, and then there's like obviously like your board at your club, which is actually creating, um, you know, events for the holders outside of that. I guess just Excellent. to add, it's sort of, you know, with the profile picture, you're buying into a community. So a lot of current the current incarnation of what nfts are is buying your way into a community which then gives you access to uh certain perks which a lot of people value because yeah you know community is definitely a, a currency in today's world you, you guys just brought up a really good point around utility and this is what i came to learn about nfts was a real uh, tell me where what i need to add into this because i'm trying to analyze projects still mm -hmm. and i've brought it down to four key pillars First of all, in no particular order. Okay, so you got the art, you got the community, the community vibes, you got the utility, which is what the token grants you access to and enables permissions off, and then you have the status. Eventually, the status points. Yeah. Um, and if you analyze those, if you predict the status points and the community well, and then you analyze the art, which is entirely subjective, and the utility well, then you're probably onto a good project. Am I missing anything in terms of analysis there? I'd say a lot of it as well, just because of how the NFT space is, is a lot of it is just hype. 
Um, so have, having how much the team itself, one is developing new features that are like keeping up to date because it is a very rapidly evolving space. So creating features that are rapidly evolved. So also looking at the competency of the team, number one. And then number two, um, as, as bad as it is, but like the degeneracy of how quickly they want to um, yeah. they want to innovate. So there's some. Can we uh, clarify? Can we clarify for the audience that degen being a degenerate in the space of NFTs is not a bad thing. It's actually yeah. uh, a badge of honor for a lot yeah. of us. In a way. So do, you explain, a way. Do, do you explain what a de- <laughs> do you explain what a degenerate somebody, is? Yeah, it's like weird to explain. It's like somebody who's just like they're gonna just like gun to get out like as fast as they can. Uh, they're just willing to take risk, doing like jumping on real crazy projects and like you know. But they're the ones who are kind of it's like, the same as a punter. Like it's it's really yeah, similar no to research. being a punter. Yeah, no yeah, research. I it's a vibe it. thing, and that's really what the NFT space is built on. A lot of the time is. Uh, an absence of the typical analysis and financial metrics you would use to analyze a business, analyze a stock, analyze um, any form of investment or asset. NFTs is like, actually, wait, do you have a sense of where this community is going? Can you sense there's a lot of hype with this community? And then even even analyzing the hype is a matter of, you mean, go sit three days in a, in a popular Discord channel and you'll yeah. know exactly what we mean. Uh, we're talking 24-7 messages um, non-stop communication between the founders, the moderators, and the token holders, the NFT holders. Um, and that is more than any, that's more vibrant communication than any other type of business I've ever heard of, to be honest. Um, apart from, yeah, actually, yeah, anything. Like, to communicate between a team and the, the, the consumer and clients, like, let's just call them consumers in this, in this um, instance, 24 seven is a remarkable thing. So that that's really the, the, the basics of analyzing these projects is can you, can you actually predict what the vibe and the community, how vibrant this community is going to be and how, and in terms of predicting the long term um, value of these assets, it's more like, okay, the underlying utility, will it become more important in time? Mm-hmm. Are they, are these, is the founding team who's, who's controlling the treasury actually investing in things that the token holders will be interested in later on. Are they, are they quite good at discerning what we're interested in? Yeah. Um, so let's, let's take a step back and talk about the type of projects before we go into your project more specifically. Right? So you've got the PFPs, which you just mentioned, which are the profile pictures people use. So you buy a profile picture of, a, of an ape, for instance. I think I've got an ape smoking a cigar, one of the cyber ape ages. I, I use that on Twitter. Um, I put that as my DP. Okay. I'm part of that community. Now I bought it for X amount of money. Um, now, uh, X amount of Solana, uh, people get funny when we use different current currencies in this space. Uh, so X amount of Solana, uh, now that I own that PFP, I'm also part of their discord channel as a holder. And because I'm part of their discord channel as a holder, the founding team has given me access to their play to earn game in Decentraland, which is a metaverse. And that play to earn game has allowed me to earn, I think it was ape tokens or something. Um, but also I have access to merchandise in real life events. I can stake with their project and create a yielding income as well. Like these are the things that are in the works. Like a lot of them aren't done yet, but these are things in the works, part of what's called a roadmap. Yeah. So that's the PFP projects. And then you've got one off ones right? Which are just these artworks. Usually they're just artworks that are, uh, uh, um, 3d artists have created or graphic designers have created who have um, a specific skill set with those platforms and they sell them as one of ones. The most famous one would be Beeple. Beeple was recently on, um, was it the Rogan podcast? So if you want to see what that's all about, that there's that, um, I think he sold one for, what was it? Upwards of 30, 40 million or something, 60 million, Crazy, something yeah. like that. So he sold a, a 3D artwork for 60 million or something like that. Um, it's up there. Um, and then you've got your, so you've got PFPs, one of ones. What else would you say? You've got just normal tickets and, certif- and, and entry into certain communities as well. Um, and I think you guys are quite unique because I don't know how to label. So how would you label down under Seoul? So there's a kind of, there's kind of a couple of few projects that do sort of what we do, but it's us is providing a metaverse based asset um, on blockchain. So for us is actually land in our little um, metaverse. So 
the things you can do with this land at the moment um, and we're continually developing these and you know I'm sure we'll chat about them more during this interview but at the moment you're able to like claim your land uh, we've put an actual picture that is from um, the same state and that's actually an AI drawn picture that you know looks pretty awesome I'm sure Sydney will share around um, and that picture is the claim to your land and then what you can do with your land is like currently edit your description, name your land. You can see, use it as a gallery for all the rest of your NFTs. Um, and then we're also in the works of adding the ability to put um, advertisements or like profile pictures or whatever you want on your land, um, to use it as an advertising space. And as we discussed uh, uh, later, we are also potentially planning to actually give you a 3D environment of that land where you can put assets on that land. It's kind of acting like a, you know, a digital version of our real world. Absolutely. I, I came across you guys, um, like I said, going through Magic Eden. I saw the project. It's sick. So, I mean, we'll get the site up. What's the site again? What's the URL? We'll put it up at the bottom. Um, you go in, you see an interactive map of Australia, and you can actually see the plots of land that you can purchase um, on the map. And then that map actually doubles up as an NFT gallery as well. Um, and then you have proof of own, you basically bought a token to that plot of land, which is now proves that your ownership over that land. Um, and uh, the roadmap for you guys, which is really the most interesting aspect, is not only the art and I guess the photography involved as well. So it's got those two aspects, but also what you're going to be able to do with that land as you amass it later on and the tokenomics involved with it as well. So let's talk about the roadmap here. So what do you guys see as your initial roadmap and what, what are your like highest ambitions later on down the track as well for potential token holders to uh, anticipate? Yeah. So at the moment uh, with the NFT holders, we're going to be releasing our own token, which we use internally as our project as our own currency to kind of upgrade your own land. Um, so in the first stages of upgrading your land, uh, we'll just be maintaining a leaderboard. And as I said, you're going to be running advertising spaces on your land. So uh, based on how high you are on that leaderboard, uh, it's going to give you how, from how high in space that you'll be able to actually view that advertisement. Gotcha. Yep. If you're really zoomed out, uh, only the top 10 will show. And as you zoom more in, you know, the, mm -hmm. the lower one, which also gives people a way to actually advertise on land um, and do that kind of stuff. Like I said, uh, going to be running some actual games and incentivizing people to come into the community to get more eyes on the land as well. Uh, so doing things like scavenger hunts on the land where uh, you could find an NFT somewhere on the land if you go searching around for it, um, inviting people to visit your land and actually like sign that they visited using their um, Solana wallet. Um, so just ways to bring more people into land and then also potentially in the future, like I was saying, to embed a 3D space of your block of land which you can actually use to develop things onto and um, you know, use that as your own kind of world um, that you have control of only if you're an NFC holder. Absolutely. And let's talk about, um, and it's obviously a very exciting journey. I, I liked it because of, I, I saw it like a monopoly aspect where you, the more land you aggregate and the more land you aggregate together, the, the basically the larger the plot on that interactive map, which is already popular. And the larger the plot of that interactive map, the more advertising space for your projects and your communities. So you're actually capitalizing of people who already under, understand the NFT space who also want to promote their own communities and now have to engage in a secondary market to get connecting plots to actually have bigger advertisement spots, plots as well, or at least have them together. Um, so that's, I love that aspect. And I can see, I can, I also felt when I was going through your project, I also felt an urge to own property. It, it, it was, a, there was a nice feeling with the proof, of, like just a psychological aspect here, that proof of ownership thing is something a bit rare for our generation. You know, mm -hmm. given the fact that <laughs> owning assets in our generation has been extremely hard. Yeah, it's right. Like just getting money. on the getting getting on the property ladder in Australia yeah. alone, very hard. And so NFTs and this project in particular, because it is that land aspect, um, having that proof of ownership, there's actually a weird feeling inside where it's like, oh, okay, this actually feels good. I want to acquire more and acquire more. Mm -hmm. Something that we didn't really have growing up in our generation, which I think's really interesting aspect of the nft world i think it also provides you with like quite a tangible way to actually figure out like what the nft is doing because like when you come to our land and you connect your wallet it's it will check your wallet it'll check what's in your wallet and then it'll create it'll start your pieces of land will start glowing and you'll see what you own um yeah. so getting that connection in between like what's in your wallet and how it can actually be used in different websites on the internet um in this new web 3.0 world 
Um, that's the yep. kind of link that, you know, is kind of driving to figure out like, you know, what utilities NFTs actually give me, how can I actually utilize them and actually see what they yep. do. So what the, I liked you guys because you had the art, like we, you had the art, you had the, the art was unique. You had the interactivity, which is, I think falls under the utility. You had the utility, which is the, the ownership, the future roadmap and the NFT gallery. Mm -hmm. um, the community is definitely there. Um, and then of course, um, the fourth pillar. What was my fourth pillar again? Jesus. Uh, Community, art, utility, and status. And status is another thing because the status was a property ownership thing and how much property you will own. And as you just mentioned, how clearly you'll see that from space depending on where you're on the leaderboard. So you guys had all those elements and it was, it was, um, it was a bit of a no-brainer from there. Now, um, let's talk about the journey to minting, like the creation to minting and like the range of emotions you went through. Cause you minted, um, you launched and you guys sold out pretty quick, right? Maybe sold out in like two days. You sold out in two days. And how many did you sell? A thousand. You sold a thousand, uh, yeah, you sold a thousand tokens in two days um, from launch. What did you guys do in the lead up to that? Or was it a complete, were you expecting that quick or what was um, that about? So, so uncertainty. Yeah, so... Tell us about the uncertainty. That's what we want to hear. So when we first started the project, it was literally like, I mean, like Sydney was in lockdown. So we were just like, oh, we just really want to get out. So our first instinct was like, all right, let's just go on a freaking huge road trip around New South Wales. Let's just enjoy it. And, you know, and we're like, oh, you know what? Fun. Let's take some photos and make some NFTs of it. And like, we're just thinking like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, you know, just make a rough project out of it. Make some NFTs. And then like we saw like, as we started to release these pictures and like we, I have some AI background, wrote some code to actually turn those pictures into the art that you see on the site. Now um, people started to gain some traction to it. Like, okay, maybe we should take this a bit more seriously, create a proper website, create a proper roadmap. Um, and as we got to midday, I mean like we had no idea. Like it was our first project launching. Like you hear some projects that sell out three seconds, some projects that don't sell out at all. You know, we've had mates who sold out in seconds. We've had mates who've made projects and, you know, didn't sell out with the bus ended up costing them more money than they put in. So like, I mean, it's like, you, you don't know what to expect. I guess the good thing on our side is like we're all devs and quite technical. So it didn't cost us too much upfront. Um, but then, yeah, we created it. And as we were minting, you know, the people were really starting to love it. And, you know, everyone that was kind of speaking about the project was like, yeah, this is really cool. Cause um, the difference is we actually had that interactive map. We can say, well, oh, we're going to mint and then create it, which a lot of projects do. So we came up that with something that people can already use. Um, and, you know, people liked it enough, I guess, to buy a couple plots of the land, um, you know, and are pretty enjoying on the project. But yeah, I mean, there definitely was a lot of uncertainty as we were launching um, to whether, you know, it's because a lot of these projects that sell out, like I said, are just your classic profile picture projects, like, oh, 777, like fucking like monkeys from from outer space have come to the world and like you know like <laughs> you're gonna yeah. upset maybe 90 percent of the space right now but <laughs> yeah but i guess us doing something different that's what kind of made us have that uncertainty right like we had no idea if it's out because what we're doing was pretty different to like what the space kind of appreciates um but yeah. i guess like people appreciate it enough Help us if, you're, if you're in this space, you'll really respect that that bit of um, humor there because a lot of the projects are writing these weird narratives. And, you know, um, apart from the fact that every second project involves an ape and a monkey, <laughs> um, it, it really can get quite repetitive. And so when you come across something unique, you jump on it. Um, unique, good roadmap, decent um, team um, with a plan. And, that, that's, and people who have things to show up front that was the other thing you just mentioned. You had a map, an interactive map, something you've developed upfront that the token holder can see straight away before they even buy. Yeah. Um, as opposed to being promised this, you, I guess it's a promised land for a lot of these um, projects. That, and that literally, quite literally, a promised land in the metaverse with magical tokens that will appear one day if you stick around long enough. Yeah. Um, so, so having the ability to discern these projects can be quite profitable. If you are an investor, of course, um, do always do your own research. Um, I, where I know, but for the audience, where, where do they start immersing themselves in this, in, if my, in, in the NFT world, my opinion, it's Twitter, go to Twitter, go join spaces, go speak to the founders directly and then join the discords, understand what the community is like, 
understand how vibrant it is, and then do the fundamental research after that. But Twitter Spaces has to be the go-to, right? I'd say my like the way I've told a couple of my friends to jump in um, is number one, just create a wallet, um, which takes a second. It's a Chrome extension. You download it. Um, you know, you can go to Binance and transfer funds, or like go to Coinspot, whatever it is, whatever your main provider is, transfer funds in. Or if you have some friends who are already in the space, tell them to transfer you a little bit um, that you can play around with, um, and start from there. And once you have a wallet. I would, the way I would recommend is like, I, I'm, I'm a big, like, believe in throw yourself in the deep end type shit. So um, what I would do is jump on Magic Eden, take a scroll, buy something real cheap, buy something for 0.1 soul, and then just follow them on Twitter, see what they're up to, join their Discord, understand just how one project works because the fundamental basis for one project kind of overlays the entire space of, you know, having a Twitter releasing your events in your Twitter, having a Discord in the Discord, like the channel's always organized around the same. They have their announcements, they have the main chats, they have like their, you know, their partnerships, all that kind of jazz. Get your, wrap your head just around how one project works and buy something cheap, you know, buy something for point one sold. It's like 20 bucks, you know what I mean? Um, to learn something, in my opinion, like 20 bucks is nothing. Um, so learn that from one space and then just by following that one space you're going to see all the big investors they're going to be trying to yeah. push you see the process the um, so you, you have like your key big names your soul big brain your soul buckets follow the real big guys they're going to point you towards like the bigger investors and then the algorithm of twitter starts taking over you follow a couple of them and they'll, they'll start referring you the rest of it absolutely and then you got you know then you you start to learn how hard it is to get on some of these white lists and people want to know what is the, what the hell is a white list and then the best the best way i can explain a white list is a pre-ipo like getting on the list for a pre-ipo company yeah. i mean, before, well, I mean before, just they, like, before they're listing they have a thousand tokens and they're going to whitelist like you know 300 of them so you can guarantee buy one before the rest it's going crazy it? now it's going crazy i was on twitter i was having a look at a few um projects today and the, you know retweet and we'll get you on the whitelist 30 spots it's like five thousand retweets on every single one i'm seeing so people are rushing in to get because being on a whitelist is like the it's like it, it's pretty much free printing your money especially if the whitelist gives you a discounted rate um, and if so, it's a popular project and the story you've made money you get on yeah. a whitelist it's popular um and you've got an exclusive spot you've made money on the secondary market yeah let's explain something here because i'm the reason i brought up whitelist is i want to this took me a while to understand what the hell all these terms meant so for everyone who's watching project starts to tease what they're about then they create a discord and then from the discord, they'll put you onto a whitelist. And then from the whitelist, you have the ability to mint their token, which means you go to a website and you pay a fee to acquire one of the 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 tokens being produced, but only you are able to do it because you are on the whitelist most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. And then once you purchase that token, you will have a secondary market on another website, such as OpenSea or Magic Eden, where you can on-sell the token that you've acquired. Yeah. So that's a basic process just for people who understand. So look, um, I'm super excited about Down Under Soul, and we're going to obviously have you boys featured in Sydney Emergence 2022 at the NFT Gallery. And I think both of you from Sydney or one of you or... Yeah. No, both. Yeah, both okay, so you both will be coming down. You already doxed yourself, so it's too late. You've got to come now. <laughs> um, we'll have we'll have your we'll have your projects up for everybody to see. You'll be there, happy to meet the investors and happy to meet the people in the audience. I'm sure and explain what the project's about. You can explain yeah. your roadmap to them face to face. Um, is there anything else you want people to know about your project before we put this out to our network? Um, Ron, you want to go first? I think, yeah, look, it's it's one of those things that the the NFT space, once you dive into it, uh, you probably will lose a lot of sleep, but that <laughs> sleep is <laughs> that sleep is well well used. Um it's yeah, it's honestly a you know cool cool place that people building a sense of community, the people you meet, uh it's yeah, it's honestly something that I think everyone should dive into because again, the the future utility of NFTs, although it's in its sort of first phase. This is just the start. And I think getting in early is definitely important. Understanding what are the fundamentals, what are the dynamics, what drives the market now when things start to blow up and tick over, then that's just going to be um, 
something that will put you in good stead. And so, yeah, I think the NFT world is, is waiting for you. I think yep. another good thing that I, I read about the other day and like a big thing that people talk about Web3 is Web3 necessarily isn't just the technology, but it's also what it kind of changes in the sense of like your assets. So in our current world, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you might be like, okay, um, not even in a, even like, you know, five, 10 years ago, you, you're doing things based on, okay, how nice is my car? Um, you know, people judge your worth based on how nice is your car? How nice is your house? How nice is your, um, your, your watch? Um, I think what's happening in this space and the thing that we're going to see shifting in the next couple of years is people are going to start judging you based on your digital assets and your NFTs um, that you can amass. Okay, how nice is your digital land? How nice is your digital house? How nice is your digital car? And um, that kind of thing, I mean, that, that's built into human nature in terms of um, your assets kind of like signify your worth. So, you know, jumping into this NFT space and amassing digital assets, it's hard to really explain to someone why uh, this digital land is valuable until you actually consider yeah. it from the perspective of it's the same thing as owning a really expensive car versus owning a, a cheap car. Like they both tell them to tell them to ask their kids why they bought certain skins in the games that they're playing on their PlayStation. Tell them to ask why there's got a credit card bill with you know, like 300 clash of clan coins. What the hell is a clash of clan coin? These are assets that have been around for ages. It's just, it's been a generational thing. It's not it's something the old, old generation don't yet haven't seen or been a part of yet. Right. Um, now so, NFTs have enabled them to actually own and on sell those assets. So it's a whole different ball game as well. Yeah. So you're right. And it's not, it's not just controlled by, like, say, Clash of Clans tokens or Fortnite tokens. Like, when you buy those tokens, you can't use them elsewhere. You can't trade them back. Uh, whereas I think what NFTs does is it gives you an asset that you can resell, that you can hold on to um, to show your worth. So I think to explain to the average Joe why our project is valuable, uh, it does kind of not what not many other projects do in the space, which is offer you land. It offers you utility in terms of, like, what you can do with that land. And it gives you a gallery that you can use in your digital world. So I think that's really to show off your assets, which is what, which is what is going to be a really cool aspect of this. Right. I, 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 final note for me, I I, like why, why I'm really excited about this as an investment. I I find it entertaining and that's why I find it great as a great investment. Cause I think uh, you've got web 3.0 coming around. Right. And so you have, you have a, a future where you're always signing in with, with a wallet into these platforms into these um sites whatever you want to whatever they'll be called in web 3.0 um and you have a massive transfer of wealth occurring between um the older generations millennials and gen y gen z sorry gen z um whereby we're putting our money when i don't think we're going to be a netflix generation that sits and binges on on shows our form of entertainment will be the nft space yeah. And I think we are taking money from the entertainment space like no tomorrow. Right. And people, yeah, it's already happening. I mean, Netflix is Thank opening you. up a game, a games aspect to their, to their subscription very yeah. soon as well. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I feel like every major service has announced some kind of crypto or NFT integration. In the last it's our form of entertainment. Now. So it's not money yeah. coming out of thin air. We're actually, we're getting money from your, or the older generation being passed down. It's happening and there's a massive flow coming and we're putting it, our form of entertainment, isn't watching TV, isn't going to the movies, isn't that our form of entertainment is this NFT space, which is the most entertaining thing we've probably had ever. I mean, constant communication with the community, games where you can earn money for playing these games um, and acquiring acquiring digital assets at a reasonable price and on selling them and making a profit. This is our form of entertainment and you can take part in it as young as 15. So, so the money's coming in the transfer of wealth is coming in. This is a sector you want to be a part of. Yeah. The thing is, it's also like, um, you know, when you're saying like entertain people might be like, Oh, you know, you're buying a picture, but like you want to really look into the projects and what kind of utility they provide. Like I've, I've spoken to, I don't know, works with a project called Lux AI and what they do is own one of their NFTs and they give you a virtual VR uh, world that you can invite your mates over to and actually play games chess in there. Like that's their that's their level one that they've already released. Like imagine in the future you own that and only you can really enjoy that VR space. No one else can just because you own that NFT. So. I, saw, I saw one of those on Magic Eden like the um what's the other one on Magic Eden the the recent metaverse one where you can that's buy you, you buy your own portals. Which portals. one? Yeah, oh, portals, portals. 
Yeah. Get your own port. It's you get your own room. You get on, and you can invite people to hang around. Um, it's your space. You own it. Uh, it's not even put, and it's not even putting on the VR goggles. It's just in browser, and people are buying it like no tomorrow. So, um, yeah, this stuff is extremely entertaining. The the utility and and where it goes from here. Um, nobody can. It's really up to innovation at this point. In creativity, a new thing could come up tomorrow, but the underlying technology allows for that creativity, which is the most important thing. Um, but yeah, we're going to have you boys at the gallery. We we'll, can't wait to see you there. I'll be excited to shake your hand in person. Um, and good luck with the, with the project. We'll be watching. Thank you so much. Appreciate uh, we appreciate you for jumping on and, uh, you know, being part of it. Absolutely, man. Speak to you soon. All right. No